Hey guys, Tony Hannity here from LazyTechGuys.com and we are now taking a look at the Samsung Galaxy Note 4 on Verizon Wireless. Obviously, this is the fourth iteration of the Note line. This has a 5.7 inch display. It's the same size screen as the screen on the Galaxy Note 3, but this one is Quad HD. That means that it has a resolution of 2550 by 1440 and 518 pixels per square inch. This is gorgeous. You put this side by side to the Galaxy Note 3 and without a doubt, because of its oversaturation and how it pops, this is one of the best looking phones on the market right now. Another few upgrades since the Galaxy Note 3, the camera on the throne is a 3.7 inch, also takes wide ang angle um, selfies um, on the rear you have a 16 megapixel camera that has optical image stabilization, a big win for me, um, a flash and heart rate monitor as well too, if you're into the whole fitness thing. Um, they did change up a few things on the overall design of the Note 4. You have a metal band going around. It's not very thick, but you can see it and it's not like that fake metal on the Galaxy Note 3. This is metal and it does have the weight and feel a little bit over on the overall chassis of the device too. The nice thing as well, you can still easily access the S Pen with the uh, S window cover that uh, Samsung was gracious enough to give me. The 3.0 USB has now been downgraded to 2.0, however you do have super fast turbo charging. So within about 15 minutes you get 50% additional charge on your battery, but you do need to use the specific wall charger that Samsung gives you in the packaging with the Galaxy Note 4. When it comes to the speaker, they did move it onto the back here, which is a little bit of a disconcerting to me as I did enjoy the speaker on the bottom, but I can kind of understand why uh, moving it from the bottom to the back was um, a, a good thing for them. I would just like to see more front-facing speakers like the way HTC and Motorola have done in their current iterations of flagship devices. Also, you have the fingerprint scanner, so when you need security and using applications like LastPass, you no longer actually have to type out your password. You just swipe to unlock and you're good to go. Overall quality of the phone, um, it sounds great, amazing battery life, and because it is using TouchWiz or you can put your own overlay, I put the Google Launcher on here, the overall experience isn't gonna be anything new. This is still an Android KitKat 4.4.4. It's not Lollipops, not Android 5.0. However, Samsung did hint that it will be getting Android 5.0, but being here in the United States, that's kind of up to Verizon. So the S Pen has also been improved fairly drastically. Um, it still has a nice lightweight form fit to it. Um, and you have these replaceable tips that come in the packaging that I inadvertently threw away. Sorry, Samson. But the commands that you have here are a little of the same, but also new. So you've got air command, air memo, smart select, image clip and screen write. And the one thing you do not have are the quick actions. So on my Note 3, I used to be able to draw a shape of some sort and within that shape, I would be able to access my calendar and my calculator, things like that. This doesn't have that anymore. So it's kind of a downer, but I guess you just have to get used to certain things. So, but if you've never tried this before, yeah, you just select screen write, takes a screenshot of whatever you're looking at, and then almost immediately you're able to do certain things like circles and you know you have different color pens, different uh, tip sizes and everything. And then you could share that, send that off to whoever and anybody as a text, as an email attachment, or just share it on Facebook and Instagram if it's something that you feel is worthwhile sharing. And a few other features on the um, camera lens and uh, and the pen, this has the technology to take a picture of certain written text, like a picture of your teacher's whiteboard. 
it would be able to catalog that, and then it would even go as far as to solving a math problem, uh, aiding you to solve a math problem. So that's kind of a cool feature. I personally haven't used it in the real world situation. I've tried it at the Samsung locations at Best Buy, and obviously they work fine there, but I haven't seen any other situation where I would need it on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, the nice thing about this, also, I don't notice a lot of Samsung bloat apps, um, or rather, I don't see a lot of Verizon bloat apps, but I do see Samsung bloat apps like S Health, S Note, S Voice, um, Scrapbook. SideSync can be very useful, especially if you have a Samsung Galaxy Tab S or one of those things. But one thing that really bothered me is that there wasn't a kids mode. I know kids mode is available on the Galaxy S4, S5, um, and kids mode wasn't yet available on the Galaxy Note 3, and it's also not easily available on the Galaxy Note 4. Apparently somebody said that all you had to do was go download it somewhere and I can't seem to find out where I would go ahead and download it. So unfortunately, I have to use a third party version of kids mode, which I guess it's fine, but I'd rather use the official kids mode from Samsung as it is really, really useful and very cool. So overall, the Galaxy Note 4 is definitely one of the best phones on the market right now. There are a few issues with TouchWiz, but that can be easily rectified with your own launcher, like the Google Now launcher or even Nova or just go ahead and root your phone and throw CyanogenMod on there. But for the general populace that aren't geeks and aren't gonna really download additional apps to make it that much more customizable, this is a great phone. It takes great photographs, low light photography at night when I'm walking my dog at two in the morning. They are very good looking even without a flash. And the flash, even when you do use it, it doesn't make everything all too splashed out. So video quality, it is up to 4K, and it has some of the best frames per second rate that I've seen compared to the older Galaxy Notes in the past. I'm very happy with this. I really hope that it keeps the top-notch longevity that I've been experiencing over the past few days with the battery life and the overall quality of the phone. As with the Galaxy Note 3, having it less than a year, I'm starting to see it slow down and I would attribute it to something similar to Windows Rot, uh, whereas as time goes on, all the cached files, all the backup debunk files that are still there are making the whole operating system run a little slower. And I'm, and I'm seeing that on the Note 3, and I hope I don't see that on the Note 4, um, especially with Lollipop, things running on art and things like that. So, for yeah. If you have any questions, concerns, um, anything else that you wanted us to look at we didn't cover here, let me know. Hit us up on LazyTechGuys.com or find us on Twitter or here on our YouTube channel, LazyTechTV, and just leave a comment section in the area below. I'm Tony Hannity, and thanks for watching. Peace.